Tanya, take a look at the water down here and you can see why they canceled all of the ferry service between the Lower Mainland and Vancouver Island today. Now, that service is going to resume tomorrow, but the big unknown at this point is where and for how long the power is going to go out. BC Hydro's operations center in Surrey. Starting this afternoon, it became a critical staging area for storm response and the expected power outages, which could be massive. We're planning for the worst. David Lebeter runs Hydro's field and grid operations. He's been moving crews down from the interior. Where he can, he's been pre-deploying them to expected trouble spots like the Fraser Valley and the Gulf Islands. Two to 300 extra linemen are available, but he cautions there may only be so much they can do while the storm is blowing. The biggest hurdle tonight is probably going to be the wind itself. You know, there'll be times when it won't be safe for the crews to work. We'll have to wait for the wind speeds to die down. Obviously, working in the dark is not as productive as working in the daylight. Uh, we were fortunate we had a small lull between this storm and the one that preceded it, which allowed us to send everybody home, get them rested. The crews are rested. We're ready for 16 hours of work. We've got crews staggered, so we'll work 24 hours a day until we get it restored. Even as the storm had barely arrived, the damage was starting, with firefighters cutting down trees in pit meadows and heavy rains falling in Langley. As the last ferry for the day left Horseshoe Bay ahead of the storm, some of the first to be inconvenienced were those caught unaware of the cancellations on major routes across the Strait of Georgia. The Swanson Ferry Terminal was eerily empty late afternoon with the causeway drawing storm watchers instead of travelers. We figured we'd come out here and watch the waves. Pretty good storm brewing right now, so it's kind of nice to come watch. Since we got here, it's, been, it's gotten like 10 times windier, so. Two places in particular that BC Hydro is concerned about. One is some of the Gulf Islands where there are a lot of trees and where they may not have been able to pre-deploy any crews. And also the Abbotsford area out in that part of the Fraser Valley. The valley creates kind of a funneling effect. It can intensify the winds. So far, as predicted, this storm really has not been much of a rainmaker, but the winds are still blowing very strong and it's going to continue. Ogden Point, the southernmost part of the, of the capital region, and people are coming here by the scores, if not hundreds. There's a traffic jam here. Rather than staying in their homes and battening down the hatches, everybody's coming out to watch the storm. Behind me is the breakwater here at Ogden Point. You can see uh, th this has been the scene for a couple hours now. Uh, dozens and dozens of people and families out here for a walk, walking all the way out the breakwater there. Uh, they must have done this a few years ago because there was no fence up until just a few years ago, so you sort of took your life in your hands to go out there. There's even people at the end of uh, the, the rockway here at the bottom who are uh, sort of toying with uh, waves being splashed on them. A little, I think, a rather dangerous thing to be engaged in, but obviously things are picking up here. It's obviously, as you can see, raining. Uh, the temperature's dropping. The winds aren't as strong, I think, as people had anticipated, but Chrissy Gordon tells me this particular area is going to get hardest hit between now and 9 o'clock. The things are going to get a little worse here rather than better, and if they do, I'll check back with you a little later.